Hey, what's going on guys? Alex here, and I've got Brendan next to me. A little bit of a change up. Yeah, uh, I figured I would help out Alex today. We're a little short today at the office, but we wanted to get this breaking news out to you. Yeah, there's so much cool stuff coming out that pretty much everyone else is out reviewing new trucks and driving all kinds of cool stuff. So we're here holding down the fort, bringing you the new news, which is pretty exciting because Kawasaki has an all new side-by-side called the Ridge. And this isn't just like a new mule or a new Terex or anything. This is an all new category for Kawasaki. Uh, and they're kind of following the Polaris route, which we'll talk about in a little bit, but this is supposed to be an all new super premium side-by-side -side that you can use for both work and recreational use. Both the Expedition and the Ranger XD came out last year, very recently, and they're both ground up side-by-sides built to be fully enclosed. And yeah, the Ranger XD, just like this Kawasaki, you can get without a cab enclosure, but they were designed to be fully enclosed premium side-by-sides to keep you out of the elements, to go have fun or to go, you know, plow your driveway or tow stuff around your property um, with heat and air conditioning and windshield wipers and everything else. Well, since this Polaris Ranger and the Kawasaki Ridge essentially now directly compete against each other in this same category, Alex, what are some of the key differences mechanically that people will want to consider since we're going to talk about price later, at least when you get down to the nuts and bolts of it, what are some of the differences that they can expect? Well, one of the biggest differences we have to talk about right away is the engine. Um, we haven't gone into the power and I want to talk about the, the Kawasaki for a little bit and then we'll kind of circle back around and talk about how it compares to the Polaris. So this Kawasaki, uh, first let's go with the power. It's powered by a 999cc inline four cylinder engine. That inline four is a little bit unique. A lot of uh, competitors are using a three cylinder and it makes 92 horsepower and 73.8 foot pounds of torque. Uh, the engine's fully rubber mounted. So again, Kawasaki's really trying to push the premium, really comfortable ride in this. So hopefully you won't feel a lot of engine vibrations and it's paired to a CVT, which is, uh, you know, really common in this space. The, um, Polaris XD, the Ranger XD also uses a CVT, but that's a steel belt, steel drive CVT. This is still a rubber belt. Um, so we'll just have to see how it holds up with time. So do you think that the rubber belt is going to be a detriment to this transmission over time, or is it something that's going to be worth the price difference? I don't think it's totally worth the price difference to, you know, we'll get into price at the end of this. The, the Ranger is a lot more expensive when you spec them similarly. Um, I wouldn't spend the extra money on, you know, the Polaris just because it has that steel belt. We've tested plenty of side-by-sides. Um, we don't love CVTs in cars, but in side-by-sides, they seem to work pretty well. And um, it actually makes sense in a side-by-side. -side, so I don't really have a, a big problem with the, the rubber belt. If they were the same price, yeah, hell yeah, I'd take the steel one all day, but they're not. Now, you were mentioning there were a couple of different configurations of this Kawasaki, and they haven't necessarily announced pricing on the entry-level version of it. So let's talk about what some of the differences are maybe of the different levels and the different versions that you can get. Yeah, so four different trim levels with this new Ridge. You're going to have the base model, uh, the Ranch Edition, and then you jump up to the HVAC, the HVAC, which... Come on, Kawasaki, <laughs> get a little more creative <laughs> with your naming than that. And the Limited. So the HVAC and the Limited are the two top of the line ones that come fully enclosed. Uh, the base model uh, obviously is the base model. And then the Ranch Edition gets you some, you know, nicer paint. And, um, you know, there's like a winch and things like that. But uh, the HVAC and the Limited are the top dog ones. And the Limited is the one you've been seeing all the photos of, the one they're really trying to tease in that cool gold color. Now, the question that I had when the Ranger came out initially was, why would you buy something like this versus a truck? And I think that that question is still going to hold true on this Kawasaki. I mean, most guys that have a ranch or a farm are out there and they just got their old beater truck, something like that to tote around all their things that they need to tote around. But why, what would be the benefit of buying something like this versus using your truck or buying a new truck? That's a great question. I mean, there's a lot of people who definitely don't need something like this and who are occasionally doing things on their property and could do just fine with whatever pickup truck they have. But there's a lot of people like us at TFL. Once you get used to using a side-by-side -side on your property, it's really, really hard to go back the other way. Um, 
you know, let's talk about some of the specs here. The bed is four feet by three feet about, which is a little bit smaller than the Polaris's bed, but you can put a thousand pounds in this bed. You can tow 2000 pounds uh, and you've got 1500 pounds of payload, which, um, you know, isn't quite on par with some trucks, but that's really good for a really short, stubby, nimble machine that you can plow through, you know, brush with, you can kind of get through trees and they're just way more nimble. Also reaching over, into the bed to actually pick things up and load things is um, way easier in a side-by-side. -side. And there's one really big feature that this has that you're not gonna find on any pickup truck, which is a strut-assisted dump bed. So you load it up with gravel, you, you load go. it up with hay, dump the bed out. In a pickup truck, you're reaching in and pulling everything out or shoveling everything out by hand. You have no dumping feature like you do on this. Yeah, I mean, that makes it pretty compelling. And then I will say too, if you have you know, narrow passages on your ranch, you know, that are normally just like a walking path or something like that. It's going to be hard to fit your full size truck down those kinds of paths. Whereas this side by side is definitely something that's going to be a little bit smaller, be able to fit in a lot tighter spaces. Yeah. This is also more fun too. I mean, sure. you can mob around at 50 miles an hour in this and it's going to take the abuse all day long. Um, you could do that in a pickup truck. You're going to feel a lot worse about doing it though. So Alex, is it time that we can, have they, have we kept them waiting long enough to talk about price? Not yet. I'm going to run through <laughs> a couple more things first and then we'll get to price. I promise. But a few things I wanted to mention just about the interior and exterior that make this feel a little more like a car and less like, you know, the Kawasaki mules we've been used to for a while. LED headlights. Um, you can get painted bumpers just like a car. You can get the Kawasaki grill emblem done in aluminum, which gives it a more premium feel. Electronic power steering across all models. A contoured bench seat. This is a three passenger vehicle, um, but they're actually contoured. It's not just like a flat seat. You have an adjustable driver's seat, which interestingly enough is kind of rare in side-by-sides. It's not as common as you would think. Um, door handles, power glass, backlit switches, heat, air conditioning with recirc, glass windshield, dome light. It's got all the stuff you would need in the car. Seven inch TFT display up front, which is a huge improvement for Kawasaki nice. side-by-sides. 13 gallon fuel tank. Our old mule we were testing at the ranch for a while was only eight gallons, 14 inches of ground clearance, 27 inch tires. This thing seems to really kind of bridge that gap between you know, a traditional side-by-side -side and a small little pickup truck. Yeah. Perfectly, honestly. I mean, you get all of the benefits of a small little truck and all of the benefits of a side-by-side -side with it being more nimble, lighter weight, and smaller. Yeah, it's, it's pretty darn compelling, I have to say, but that Kawasaki is coming out with this. I think they're doing it at just the right time. Yeah, I think so too. And this is, you know, a vehicle that you could buy once and use for two different things. Park it up at the ranch like we do, um, use it to take care of the property, to film videos, and then you can take it out on the weekends and go do a trail ride with it and have a really good time. Are you ready to talk about price? Oh, I've been ready. I know you have. I know been. all of these people have been They've ready been to talk about price. They've been patiently waiting about price. <laughs> so four different trim levels, like I mentioned, the, uh, the base model, the ranch, the HVAC, and the limited. So unfortunately, the base model pricing, I hate to tell you, is not quite announced yet. The ranch edition starts at $23,999, which is significantly undercutting the Polaris. Now, does the ranch edition have the fully enclosed compartment up front? No, it does not. Okay. So $23,999, it's not fully enclosed, but um, the Polaris Ranger XD 1500 starts at $30,000, $7,000 more than this, and you still also don't get a full cab enclosure in that spec. So in order to get a full cab enclosure in this, you jump up to a $30,000 machine for a three-seater. This is They're all three-seaters in the Kawasaki, which still undercuts the Polaris by about 10 grand. In order to get a North Star edition with a full cab enclosure and a three-seater, you're looking at around 40 grand for the Polaris. That is huge. I mean, a 25% discount off of the Polaris. And really the only drawback that I am seeing is the fact that it has a rubber belt on the CVT. Other than that, it seems like it's super compelling. It's, I mean, it's pretty cool that they're able to offer something as useful as the Ranger, but for 10 grand less. Yeah, I mean, we'll have to see. I'm gonna go fly out and actually get some seat time in one of these in the near future. 
You gotta remember, it's it's a little bit of a different vehicle than the Ranger XD 1500. That has extreme duty in the name. It can tow 3,000 pounds. This can only tow 2,000 pounds. That has a bed capacity of 1,500 pounds. This has a bed capacity of 1,000 pounds. So towing, payload, bed capacity is all a little beefed up in the Polaris. Um, but yeah, I mean, as far as like the concept goes, a fully enclosed side by side, yeah, you, you get your money's worth, it looks like, in the Kawasaki at least. And then if you want the fully loaded limited model, you're looking at around 33,499. I'm sure the price could go up from there um, well, with accessories. Would we like to speculate as to what the entry level model is? Could it, could it be a sub $20,000? Side by side? I don't think there's any way you're uh, you're getting this at under $20,000. With all the premium features and it being a ground up new vehicle, I don't think so. There's also, as far as I can tell, not a huge difference between the base and the ranch edition. Um, looks like some, you know, more premium accents and bits and uh, a winch on the front, but there's not a huge difference there. So I don't think you can expect the price to, to go down thousands on that one. Well, either way, it's still a really cool-looking machine. I know I'll be excited to see what you think of it once you do actually get to drive it. But, uh, yeah, it's cool to bring this breaking news, and obviously this segment is growing because it's super popular. Yeah, I mean, I we all were kind of shocked when Polaris did this at first, um, bringing out really expensive side-by-sides that – they're trying to make feel more like a car. Um, but obviously the rest of the manufacturers are thinking that there's something to this. Um, so Kawasaki's the next one jumping in. I'm sure we'll see the other manufacturers come in with models like this, but it seems to be the new trend is fully enclosed side-by-sides with heat and air conditioning and windshield wipers completely sealed off from the elements. So yeah, um, base model coming this fall, the ranch edition is available now, and then the HVAC and the limited will be available in the spring. I'll get you some ride impressions as soon as I can with this. We'll open up all the compartments, show you where all the storage is, play with everything. Until then, check out alltfl.com. See you in the next one. Take care.